Hey you all, I hope your day is going well. Today I wanted to make a video on social work and spirituality, what you need to know. Before we get started, please be sure to subscribe to my channel and turn on your notification button so you can be notified of more videos like this. And I have started an Instagram account, so please be sure to follow me at Donzel Post. To begin, I think we should start by defining spirituality. So for the sake of this video, we're going to define spirituality as the belief of being able to connect to something past matter or mind. It also is a way to make personal meaning out of a situation as well as gaining a greater understanding of one's self and to appreciate the connection with others. The next thing we should learn are the numbers. Over 77% of its citizens identify or believe in some form of religion. This is a constant poll that eight out of 10 Americans believe in God. So statistically speaking, it shows that is it is very important for us to acknowledge the importance of spirituality and religion when working with our clients because chances are they identify with some religious affiliation. Now religion may not mean a lot to a lot of social workers and they may not put much emphasis on it because to the person in general, their religion may not mean a lot to them, but the spirituality of the person definitely means a lot to them because it's how one has a greater sense of self and how they create meaning out of situations as well as connecting to others. And for a lot of people, the religion helps set a structure and an orientation for a person to navigate and accomplish those different goals. So as social workers, it's our responsibility to ensure and to address the overall well-being of the person, the entire human well-being, and that includes one's spirituality. To neglect it is really doing them a disservice. I'm making this video today because I do feel as though it is not touched on enough in our practice and it should be touched upon more. I do not believe as social workers we explore this area enough. When I would conduct mental health assessments, there was one question that explored whether or not we should take into consideration cultural or spiritual or religious orientations when constructing the treatment plan. And a lot of times the client would say no because of how it's worded. And it, again, it's only one question and a lot of people aren't going to see the connectedness initially. So to ask them whether or not it should be taken into consideration really doesn't do them any justice. Although most people would say no, as we began treatment and as we would further explore different aspects of who they are, their spirituality and religion was a huge aspect of who they were and when they would share that, I took that as an opportunity to explore and to learn more about them. And for many of my clients, it guided their decision making. It guided the ways in which they lived their life and how they learned the world. Many would share how they would pray and do devotions and meditate on scripture and different biblical passages. So these were things that I was able to capitalize on and utilize as homework assignments, therapeutic activities in our session. I found that this really increased their coping mechanisms and their skill building, and it really helped them create meaning out of different situations. It really helped them to forgive, to let go, leave their religion, or they would discontinue it. It wasn't that they didn't believe in it anymore, but they just stopped practicing it. They felt as though they became too busy to prioritize it, just like with self-care. And so reintroducing that into their life and making sure that they made time for their spirituality and their religion really made great improvements in their overall improvement. So clearly there was an interconnectedness between their overall well-being as well as their spirituality. 
So an area that I would encourage you in would be to watch out for implicit bias. Whether you identify with another religion or you may not identify with a religion, you may identify as agnostic or as an atheist. And so I think it's really important as social workers to make sure we are in check with our own bias and that it doesn't negatively impact our work that we do with our clients. We shouldn't project our own thoughts onto people. So one area that I think this is so important is, is when we're working with our clients, if we identify with one religion and they identify as another, it's really important for us to make sure that we don't project our views or try to convert one over, but really take a cultural humility approach and gain an understanding. I mentioned this because social work and spirituality has gone through three phases. The first stage was sectarian origins, and this is where it took a Judeo-Christian approach to social work. This was also where the Good Samaritan was founded. The second stage is professionalization and circularization. And this is really where it stepped away from the Judeo-Christian worldview and took a more humanism approach, took a more circular worldview on things just to be more neutral. But also this is where religion and spirituality began to be viewed at best as more irrelevant and unnecessary and at worst illogical and pathological, which is not okay. And so in the 1980s, this is where the resurgence of spirituality interests emerge and it, we began to blend the two of accepting that one may not be religious but acknowledging that many people are religious and not really condemning them for that. I'm making this video today again because a lot of people are still stuck in phase two with the condemnation of believing in a higher power or believing or, or identifying with certain uh, religious or spiritual ideologies or doctrine and just to have a faith in an intangible thing to begin with. I think when we are fighting for social justice and we are fighting for equality and inclusivity and diversity, we have to be careful to m ensure that we are not discriminating against other groups. Many social workers should create a safe space for their clients to further explore and express their spirituality and religious affiliations and helping them make sense of the world and helping them navigate and move through the world in a way that is most satisfying for them. There are four ways in which I believe a person should be able to do this. The first way is to simply display images in your office, have up uh, an inclusivity sign of religions, a coexistent sign of religions in your office to show that this is a space for you to share and explore your religiosity and spirituality. The second is as the social worker, as the person in the power seat, initiate that conversation and ask open-ended questions. Don't ask a close-ended, oh, is this important to you type of question, but get an understanding for their introduction to their religion or their spirituality. How do they identify with it today? Where did those changes emerge? And make sure that they're in a good, healthy space spiritually and that there's not any religious ambiguity there or any religious or spiritual conflicts and if so that definitely should be part of the treatment plan and and it should be addressed in the sessions for sure the third thing is make sure that you don't overlook what they're saying every word that they say you should 
have that in the back of your mind and you should make sure that you are getting a great understanding and that you are asking follow-up questions that you're making furthering statements and not just saying okay i checked that off the list i made sure that they identify with something and that's it but no make sure that you are really incorporating it into your practice and into that assessment, into the treatment plan, and into the, the therapeutic session. And the last thing is be sure to communicate respect and acceptance of that person's spirituality and religion and help facilitate and foster a sense of pride and a sense of understanding and a sense of oneself as it pertains to their spirituality and their religious affiliation. A tip that I would share is if you don't know about a specific religion, look it up. Google is your friend. Ask. It is okay to ask your client to share more. Give them power. Allow them the opportunity to educate you on their experience with this religion and their understanding of it. And finally, enroll in a course. Take a continuing education unit. Attend a workshop that may be offered at a conference or buy a book that further explores and outlines these things. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to share it with your community and create a dialogue among other social workers to discuss this very important matter. And comment in the comment section below, what is your experience with social work and spirituality? What is one way you incorporate it into your practice today? Thanks so much for watching and until I see you next time, be you, be great.